Hello, Aries. I'd like to welcome you to Dove and Serpent Tarot. This reading is for the month of April 2023. If this is your first time here, I hope you'll pick up your tarot cards and read along with me. Uh, if you've been here before, I'd like to thank you for having me back. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get started. First card today, the 10 of cups. I feel like you are a person who is very capable of very deep emotions, right? I think that you um, can be very sensitive. I think that you are intensely aware of what's going on around you, um, what the vibe is from other people. You know, I think you can read emotions very easily. Um, I think that you can be a little bit indulgent in some of these feelings, right? Uh, I think it may be a little bit difficult for you to separate someone else's feelings from your own, you know? It feels like, um, it feels like you're an intensely creative person. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you are an artist of some kind, um, a musician, a uh, painter, sculptor, um, even, uh, you know, a cook, a chef, uh, an artist of food, right? Um, especially with the Ten of Cups, I kind of get that, that food vibe, that, that cooking or chef kind of feeling that goes along with it. But I feel like you are intensely creative in whatever, whatever way that is expressed. I think your creativity is very important to you. And I think with that kind of intense creativity, um, a lot of the times it comes with this sensitivity to the world around us, okay? So I think you are very sensitive to the emotional energy coming from other people. I think you can pick up on the very subtle clues that other people are maybe even unconsciously putting off just with their vibe, uh, with their mannerisms, with their tone of voice, with their, you know, their gestures and that sort of thing. I think you pick up on those subtle clues, the kind of uh, micro expressions, right? So I wonder what's going on this week where that sensitivity is really going to stand out. I think it's either going to be emphasized this week or something is going to call your attention to your, your sensitivity. Now, I don't mean sensitivity in a bad way at all. That shouldn't have any kind of bad connotations to it. I think it's a very positive quality to have. I think a lot of people in this day and age um, are losing their sensitivity, right? We're being kind of desensitized even to certain things. But I feel like you are really maintaining that. And I think it's because you are such a creative person. Now, you don't have to be a musician. You don't have to be a visual artist or anything like that to be creative, right? Our creativity can come out in so many different ways. But let's see what our next card is today. Well, it's a seven of pentacles. So it is a rather frustrating situation that's coming this week, okay? Um, I think that there is maybe something going on with, I'm feeling like it's either a project at home or it's a project at work, but I feel like you're trying to accomplish something, okay? And I kind of feel like whoever is around you in this situation um, is putting off some maybe strange vibes or maybe some vibes that are rather hard to decipher, okay? There's something that's really uh, piquing your sensitivity this week related to a, a joint effort. <clears throat> Excuse me. It could be something at home, something at work, but it's a project that you're trying to accomplish, okay? And it's not something you're doing by yourself. I feel like it's something that has to do with uh, another person in your life, uh, maybe we can find out a little bit more about that person, who they are, what area of your life they are They're active. Um, down beneath everything, though, we see a Ten of Swords. We, t we see a Ten of Swords. There's something uh, related to these plans that you had with this person. So... It could be in the form of a relationship rather than a, a kind of a business project or something. I think what's going on is that 
this project that we are working on with the seven of discs isn't really panning out. It really isn't coming to fruition. And I think a lot of that has to do with this kind of disharmony between you and whoever else that you're working with, right? Could be a domestic partner, could be your spouse, could be um, your romantic partner, could be a business partner, business associate, coworker, family member even. But the relationship between you and this person is strained right now. And I feel like that strain, that disharmony, that it kind of is like, um, you know, when you're moving forward, they're moving backward. When you're turning left, they're turning right. You know what I mean? And it's creating some kind of disharmony. And that disharmony is what is kind of making these plans fall apart, right? With the Ten of Swords. A lot of our plans are falling through. A lot of what we've been intending, the work that we are trying to do, the relationship that we're trying to have. Because in order to be successful at this project, you have to have a good working relationship with the other people involved, right? So that's what's kind of, um, that's what is at the bottom of this whole situation, is that strained relationship. If we could improve that relationship, we would have more success with whatever work it is that we're doing. <clears throat> now, excuse my voice because I'm still getting over the uh, kind of residual effects of the COVID virus. Uh, we're all negative in this house, but we, um, we still have some of the residual congestion and stuff. Recent past, three of wands. So you've really, you feel like you've put your best effort into this. Okay, so I'm almost feeling like this disharmony, this strain that we're feeling, you don't feel like it's your fault at all. Okay. And it, it honestly, it probably is not. Um, you feel as if you've put in your very best effort here, that you have, uh, you have the work ethic, you have the commitment, you have the, you know, the spiritual will, you have the desire to do this and to accomplish this. So in some ways, it's almost like we are putting the blame a little bit on this other person, but I think really where the blame should go if there is any blame. Now, we're not trying to point fingers. But I think the, the real root cause here is the strain of this relationship, is the, the inability for the two of you to really connect and find that harmony. Because again, you're a very sensitive person. So I, say, I, I think that the simple fact that you're unable to really get a read on them, that you're still struggling to really understand them or vibe with them, you're very sensitive to that. And I think that is really affecting the success of the work that the two of you are doing together. Okay, whatever the project is, it could be a relationship, it could be a marriage, it could be something at work, it could be a project at home, any of these areas, okay? Well, let's see. Let's see what else we've got above everything here. Up on top, four of cups. So. We've got the water energy, okay? Now this is, um, <clears throat> this is kind of a, um, not an aspiration, not a hope. This is where you sort of see things going, okay? The Four of Cups is a rather lazy card. It's, it's rather like me, it's, it's kind of lazy. Um, it's always looking for the easiest way to do things, right? I think part of your, part of your impulse at this moment is to withdraw a little bit, is to kind of put the ball into their court. You know, there is this feeling that you have done everything that you could, that you've put in your best effort. This is the sun in Aries, right? This three of wands. This is really the best work ethic, the best of intentions, the commitment, the, the energy and strength and power. You've done everything right as far as you can see. So your only option now is to kind of just sit back and relax and wait for this other person to step up, right? So we're kind of just idling in the, the bay right now. We're waiting for everyone else to get their act together. I think your act is together. I think you're very sensitive to the, the shortcomings, perhaps, of this other person. I don't want to say shortcomings. That's not a good word. Um, just through the 
the rather slow progress or of the kind of lack of communication that's coming with this person, that's coming through this person. Okay. So I feel like there's really not a lot left in your eyes that you can do to get this thing moving, right? I mean, short of, uh, well, maybe we'll get the emperor energy and you're just, uh, you could take charge and you could, um, you know, have that serious talk, that serious conversation with them. But I feel like you've tried that. Uh, I feel like with the Three of Wands and the Ten of Swords, you've tried that already, right? I think you've had that conversation. But let's see what we have in the immediate future. We have a Five of Swords. It seems like the way forward really is to... is to uh, realize the sensitivity that you have and ask yourself maybe if you are making a little bit too much of this. I'm not trying to diminish the importance of how you feel. Uh, your feelings are more than valid. Your feelings are appropriate. But if we're going to have success in this project, the Five of Swords is asking us to look at things in a different way. Okay, This is saying that right now our will, our intention, this three of wands and whatever project we're trying to accomplish, trying to succeed uh, with, is being lost beneath all of the, uh, all of this disharmony, all of these details, right? It's kind of lost underneath all the muck in this situation. So it's not that you're being too sensitive, but it is a question of putting aside our differences, putting aside our sensitivity for the sake of this project. Can we turn this five of swords the other way around? Can we make the, the project, the success of this thing, our priority? Right? Because this is something that you have committed to. It's something that is a creative expression of, of yourself, of your soul. But it's getting lost. It's getting... Um, well, it's getting kind of covered up by these other elements that are involved, okay? By the other four elements are covering up that fifth element of spirit, of intention. So the way forward is to perhaps reevaluate our differences, you know? Reevaluate this disharmony and see if we are, see what role we are playing in it. You know, um, at the very beginning, I said that you're a very, you're, you're a person who's very sensitive to the vibes of other people, to their emotions. Um, and I also said that sometimes it may be difficult for you to know or to realize where their feelings end, right? And where yours begin. So I, I think the Five of Swords is asking us to reevaluate that in a little bit more of an objective way, right? Try to pull ourselves out of this emotional sensitivity and look at the situation from a different perspective. Now, maybe we'll get the hanged man in here somewhere too. Because I think that if we really look at the situation, we might see a way that we can at least temporarily uh, put these differences aside, put this disharmony aside for the sake of this creative project, whatever this is that we're trying to build. Uh, rather than letting our differences, our emotions, our, um, our uncertainty, our feelings, you know, um, prevent us from making progress. Okay. And again, I'm not trying to invalidate your feelings or to um, diminish the importance of how you feel, and in no way am I saying that this sensitivity is a bad thing. I think more of us need to be sensitive, you know, receptive to the, the energy of other people, right? Sensitive, for some reason, has like a negative connotation sometimes, and I don't like that. 
Uh, I've always been told I was too sensitive. Well, I don't, I don't think there is such a thing. I think in certain situations, we need to learn how to turn down our sensitivity a little bit so that we can make progress, so that we can move forward, right? And if we can do that, what is the energy going to be like? Oh, nice. That's an Eight of Pentacles. I love the Eight of Pentacles. Uh, this card really is saying that you, um, you, you need to go out on a limb here, right? Because that's where the fruit is. And that's what this card is symbolizing. A slow and deliberate and meticulous focus on the details. Focus on why we're here and what we're doing, right? There's been a lot of focus on this person, this relationship, this dynamic, and its dysfunction. That maybe we've lost sight of the, we've lost sight of this actual thing that we are building and growing. And the fruits, the, the abundance, the harvest that it's going to yield, you know. So this is showing us the benefit of kind of taking this risk of tuning down our sensitivity just a little bit, just temporarily, so that we can continue to grow this beautiful plant and reap the rewards and harvest the, the fruit of that, okay? And I think if we refocus, we, if we reshift our focus, like we were talking about with the Five of Swords here, Shifting our focus away from this, the dysfunction, the confusion um, in this dynamic with this relationship and refocus it on what we're trying to accomplish, then I think you'll begin to see that progress, right? There will be the, the visible signs of progress. Now, in your environment, there is that five of wands. There's an intense energy with you. And I think that this card is um, showing a little bit of your leadership skills. Okay, I think that you're someone who um, doesn't like to take the lead, doesn't like to put themselves into the foreground and be in charge. But when you do, you're very good at it. You know, And I think that's a little bit of what's being called for here. We have the five, look, the five of swords and the five of wands. The five of swords is saying, look, you need to be in control of yourself and your reaction to this situation, right? What is your focus going to be? What is your will going to focus your mind upon? Okay, so you have to be the leader of yourself. And then the five of wands over here is saying that you've, you've got to kind of be the leader of everybody else too. And that's okay. It's not something that you always do. It's not something that you particularly enjoy doing, but you're good at it, okay? Um, because you are fair, because you are very cooperative, because you, um, you're you honest, you're, you're earnest, you know? You truly want everyone to succeed. And I mean, first of all, there's a reason why this other person, or maybe it's more than one person, I don't know. There's a reason why they're involved in this with you, okay? Um, it's not just you've been arbitrarily stuck with this person. You know, it's in some way, it's been your choice to engage in this activity with this person and to uh, build this or to work on this project with them. So you, you want them to succeed just as much as you want this for yourself as well. Okay. Um, and so in this kind of situation, you will, I feel, the cards are saying that you'll do well to take the lead and to start directing some of this energy. Okay. Maybe this person just has a different style than you, a different way of approaching the work than you. Maybe they have a different timetable. Maybe they just Maybe they don't know why the two of you aren't in sync, you know? And maybe with a little bit of push from your, your leadership side, you will easily sync up with this person, 
you know you'll synchronize your watches and things will be flowing smoothly after that and it might just take a little bit of effort on your part nothing too crazy there's the air there's the princess of swords I wonder I wonder if this person's an air sign person um, I think what the princess of swords here is talking about is your fear or your your concern or the the little worry in the back of your mind that your attempt at leadership might be might be poorly received you know that you might assert yourself and take control and take the reins and get this ship moving again and this other person maybe an air sign person they might rebel against that they might reject your uh your claim to leadership right and I think that's a natural worry, a natural concern. I wouldn't say it's a fear, right? Because I know that you don't like to step into leadership roles, but when you, when you feel it's absolutely necessary, you've got no problem doing it, you know? And I think you have the sensitivity to be the right kind of leader, you know? These two are very, very good together. Right, this sensitivity and this ability to lead. I think leaders must be sensitive. Right? And they must have a very strong connection to their own spirit, their own will, their own self, their own higher power. Okay, so you have I think everything in line, everything in harmony within yourself. There just needs to be this shift of focus uh, in order to utilize and activate these energies and create the success that you're after. But I can see that you, in the back of your mind, are thinking, this person's not going to take this very well. You know? And they might resist your leadership a little bit, but I don't think you're the type of person to give up quite so easily. Um, with the, the, first, uh, the first rebellion or the first rejection of your, of your energy is not enough for you to, to retreat. Right? You're not throwing in the towel. So that's just a little something to consider and to be prepared for. I think they might kind of battle against you a little bit. The, the princess of swords here is trying to defend themselves, but they're still not very good at that. Right, So they may resist a little bit, but you're going to get your way. Okay, And again, it's not a, a dominating energy. This is a very... This is a very... Um, fair and honest attempt to take the lead here okay because i don't feel like they are doing that i don't feel like anybody else has really stepped up so i think with your energies and the type of person that you seem to be you seem like the the right person for the job honestly let's find out what the end result of all of this might be wheel of fortune beautiful energy beautiful energy with this wheel of fortune this is that jupiter energy this is expansive this is all about growth and success this is harmony this is <clears throat> not just perfect harmony all of the time this is accepting the ups and downs right this is a wheel that turns right it's not stationary this wheel is turning things are cyclic things will uh, you'll have moments of more progress, less progress, right? You'll have more energy and less energy. There'll be more harmony one day, less harmony another day, but it's always advancing. So it's not really a circle, it's more of a spiral. You are still making visible progress even through the ups and downs of the dynamic with who I think is an air sign person. But this is really saying that with all of the energy, if you're to utilize all of this energy in the appropriate way, your success is all but guaranteed. Okay? And moment to moment, it may not appear that way because you could be on one or the other um, you know, ends of this wheel. right? You can be either at the top or the bottom in any given moment or somewhere in between. But know that even through that rather roundabout way or roller coaster kind of um you know motion you're still moving forward you're still getting somewhere right 
So I think this card is very revealing about the the overall nature of this situation. There are no other major arcana cards here. Right? This is the only one, and it comes at the very end. So in order to get your rewards, you do have to go out on this limb. Right? You do have to kind of take this risk and do something that maybe makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, kind of putting yourself in the foreground and taking the lead. But it's going to work out. And it's only through making each of these choices, activating all of these energies, that you're finally able to get to this. And this is Jupiter um, basically just pouring gold on you, right? Just dumping bags of money, you know, uh, figuratively. I hope literally. Um, but it's just the blessing of that Jupiter energy, right? That is kind of... You know, this may sound funny, but rewarding you for all of your efforts, right? And I think that this is a good practice for you as part of your internal spiritual work to be able to adjust your sensitivity or to reevaluate where you're focusing your energy. Again, not trying to change your sensitivity, just tune it down a little bit when we need to so that we can achieve our goals, okay? And like I said, people have always told me in my life, you're too sensitive, you're too sensitive. I don't believe that to be true, but I also learned a lesson there, that maybe in certain situations I can be too sensitive where I basically shoot myself in the foot, you know? I can be so sensitive sometimes that I will just four of cups it I will just sit and pout and I won't make any progress you know maybe even uh, backslide a little bit so I know that my sensitivity can sometimes work against me and it's important to refocus that using our spiritual will to refocus our mind on what we are trying to accomplish what are the goals that we have in our lives right now so I think you really are on your way to this wheel of fortune. This is just the best outcome possible. This is just saying that, look, things are going to progress. You're going to get what you want out of this, right? And I think you know what you want, the three of wands. You know why you're doing this. You know what it means for you. You know that it's an expression of your soul, of your spirit, of your creativity. And you can be confident that Making, these, making the right decisions here as you are, you will achieve your goals. And I think this is wonderful. Well, Aries, I really hope this resonated with you, and I thank you for letting me read for you today. I look forward to seeing you again next week. If you want to stick around for the extended reading, please click on the link that's right up there, and I'll see you on the other side.